Hey guys, Corey, Famous Media. I've had a lot of requests and comments uh, from all you guys uh, who subscribe and watch my videos and you wanna know how to grade footage. So I'm gonna start with the basics here and I'm gonna uh, do this first video on how to grade Sony's S-Log2. And you're gonna have to have DaVinci Resolve. Final Cut Pro 10 is good, but it's not gonna give you uh, all the tools that you're gonna need uh, to be able to edit S-Log2 properly. So here we go, as you can see, uh, I'm in DaVinci Resolve. I'm gonna go ahead and open up uh, some footage here that I shot with the Sony uh, A7S. Uh, and there's definitely more dynamic range in the A7S than there is uh, in even the Blackmagic Pocket or cinema cameras, which are well into 13 stops at dynamic range. Uh, the Sony, um, the fact that it's got so much usable dynamic range, and there's a lot of confusion with dynamic range and usable dynamic ranges. It doesn't really help to have 14 stops of dynamic range if two of those stops are, are noisy, like the really dark shadows have a ton of noise. You've got to darken it to get rid of the noise. Or you have to blow out a highlight to get rid of some noise that may be in the highlights or some clipping or uh, some banding issues. So when you think about it like that, usable dynamic range and actual dynamic range are totally different. Uh, and the fact is that the Sony a7S does so well in low light that you're getting the 14 stops of dynamic range because there is very little, if any, noise at all. And whatever noise is there can be corrected easily. And the sensor is such a high quality sensor. There's no banding or fixed pattern noise or anything. It's just a little bit of uh, noisy grain. And that only happens above 12,000 uh, ISO. So 12,800 is where that noise will even barely start to show. In fact, I've pushed uh, video up to 25,600 and gotten very little noise, just depending on the lighting situation. But here we go in S-Log2. Just be careful not shooting an S-Gamut because the only way to really correct S-Gamut the right way is to actually have a Sony LUT, or what we call them lookup tables. Uh, the only way to really fix S gamut properly and edit it in post is to have a LUT from Sony, which is the ones from the FS7, uh, F55, and F5 cameras, which I do have. And if you guys have them, you'll be able to correct um, S gamut, which I will show you how to do one of those as well today. First, we got some footage here that I took today uh, and yesterday, and we're gonna start off um, this will actually be uh, the S gamut one right here. And then this one here will be non S gamut. So I'm gonna click this in here uh, and then I'll take one that I took yesterday. I forget which one is which, but uh, I believe we'll do this one right here. So give you a little idea. I think I even have one shooting into the sun a little bit. Yeah, so this'll this will do perfect right here. Now, we're gonna get these in here and I'm gonna show you guys how to edit S-Log2 properly. When you're creating a timeline here, I always empty the, um, the checkbox here because you, you, you don't want the timeline to be empty, of course. So that's just like a little thing that I always do. So here we go. It's pretty flat. You can see the dynamic range is friggin' spectacular. A little dark over here in the shadows, but I mean, all in all, if you look at the bottom of the screen and the sky, I mean, it's just amazing how well this sensor is doing. Oops, locking me out a little bit. So we'll just put that up here. You can see how it's right in the middle. Nothing's clipping. We've got so much information here. Now, look past all the LUTs that I have here. We're gonna go to the one that comes with DaVinci Resolve, which is under Sony. Um, actually, uh, we're gonna have to go to one LUT right here. There you go, S-Log2 to uh, Rec. 709. Now we're gonna put that on there. It's it's pretty standard, it works well. And as you can see, it's like poof, it just blows everything out. Now, many people may have done this and be like, oh my God, this looks like crap. They go in here and they, they take it off and they're like, man, what am I gonna do? Just, we'll start from scratch. First step here, just let's put that back on. Don't worry about it, it is gonna blow it out, but here is what we're gonna do. We're gonna come over here into the gain, um, which can be done either here or under the gain on the color wheels. And we're gonna bring it down because the LUT is gonna, you know, basically clip everything. And we're gonna start getting this back to a usable image. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come into this menu right here under the color match. We're gonna bring those highlights down a lot, somewhere around 85 or 80, you know, play with it to taste. And we're gonna bring the shadow details back up in a minute. But first let's go back over here and let's bring the overall profile up so we can get a little bit more of a usable range. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna play with the offset because as you can see over here, it's clipping in the shadows. Not much, but there is clipping going on. So we're gonna go ahead and put, pull the offset up just so it sits above zero, just touching. 
Now we're gonna go back here and bring the gain down just a bit so we don't clip any of the highlights just for now. I'm gonna go back into the color match. It's real, it's real simple. Just gotta play with it a bit, get it to fit. We're gonna add some shadows here. Anything above 50 is gonna have quite a bit of noise. Anything below 50 will be pretty usable. 25 or below is no noise. We'll start at 25 and you'll see it brighten up a lot of the shadow detail. Um, so if we go maybe 35, we can go ahead and bring down um, the little offset that I got going on here. So we're probably gonna be doing okay right about there, which will allow us to bring the gain back up because we're not clipping anymore. So we can bring the gain up just till it's under the line. You don't want it to clip too much. So there we have it. Um, now we've got a really good image as you can see from here. The colors are starting to pop, but we're gonna add a little more flare. Gonna get the colors in there like that. Um, gonna add a little bit of contrast, not too much because you don't want to clip those highlights. Um, 1.1 or below is definitely gonna be good. We'll go back here, maybe pull out a little bit more of those highlights and maybe add a little bit more shadow detail. Um, things over here are really dark. There's not really a way around that. No camera would be able to get all the detail out of there unless you had 18 plus stops to get into there because it was really dark under those trees. Um, but as you can see, it looks really, really darn good. And that is just about it. This is just a, a quick tweak. Now, to give you an example, uh, I'm gonna re-import uh, another clip that was taken about the same time, just so you guys get an idea of how much dynamic range we're truly getting. I'm gonna put this one in here, just so you can see it. Do a little comparison. So basically, this is what we started off with, something like that, uh, and then we end up with this. So you guys can can see how just fantastically gorgeous uh, S-Log is and the dynamic range that you're gonna get. You're going to get 14 stops. It may be more. I don't really have a way to measure that accurately, but I can tell you for sure it's well into 14 because uh, in my next video, I'm gonna demonstrate the difference between grading Cinema DNG and S-Log and how um, Sony a7S has more dynamic range than the cinema camera, which has 13, uh, and that's been proven. So this uh, camera here, the Sony a7S, is well into 14 stops. To save time, uh, right here you click on the first video, like you say you're adding multiple clips, click on, on the first one, and you're gonna go to Memories, and you're gonna go to Save, and you can just save it. It'll, it'll drop up here. Uh, I'll even go ahead and we'll do, um, we'll do an S gamut one right quick. I'll pull, this is an S gamut. We're gonna have to use an F55 um, LUT for this to work properly. Uh, I suppose we could do it without it, but I, I'll show you what that looks like. Um, so this is the A7S to F55 uh, LUTs that I use. Um, this is the cinema version. You can see it just poof, it just blows right out. Uh, but we can correct that like we did before. And we're gonna go ahead and pull that down. And we're gonna go uh, over here and play with our shadows and our highlights, of course, our highlights and shadows, I'm talking backwards here. Um, come back into color correction here. Little too much saturation. And this is a filmic uh, LUT, of course. So it's got a really uh, different look to it than just your standard uh, basic color profile. Uh, but we can change that at any time. Uh, so you can use the basic stuff, uh, which would be uh, the Rec 709, which of course you can see it totally changed from the film. Uh, we bring that back up to right about here. Gonna bring the offset down just a bit. And then we're gonna play with our saturation you can see that gives you a totally different look uh, for um, the S gam. You can pull up the contrast a little bit more. Beautiful image. Uh, and of course, without the LUT, it's just day and night. The dynamic range is there. We can even just go back to the regular uh, one that comes with uh, DaVinci Resolve, which will be uh, the S log two. Um, it'll actually be in single. I don't know what I'm doing there in uh, the third one, but here we go. And we'll have to bring that down just a little bit again. So there's many ways you can play with it. Just pay attention to your uh, highlights and shadow details. This is a really good basic starting point right here. 
Uh, it's absolutely just fantastic if you ask me. I think it looks beautiful in every way. We can pull those shadow details up even more, bring that offset up to about here. And look at that. We're clipping a little bit, but that's expected. Um, we can always bring that back down if we need to just a little bit, or we can go into the highlights like previous. Uh, and, and bring those down a little bit more. They respond, it's very similar to Cinema DNG, uh, but a little bit more difficult if you aren't used to using it. Uh, so just, you know, practice and you'll get better with it. So hopefully you guys found this helpful. I'm gonna play on through a couple of those clips in full screen and 4K for you to see the difference. Uh, and hopefully I was able to show you a little something about S-Log and how to edit that and how to grade it. Um, there's many other things you could do to stuff like this for the film look. Um, that you can you can make things look filmic, which I'll get into in another video, but I just wanted to demonstrate on how to edit S-Log2 from the Sony a7S properly, which also goes for pretty much any camera that shoots S-Log2. So let's take a look at S-Log2 ungraded. It looks super flat, but all the information is there. Of course, we're using Cine2 color space. Stay away from S gamut unless you have those LUTs from Sony. Here we go, graded Cine2 color space, just fantastically gorgeous, looks great. Highlights are brought down, shadows are up, the dynamic range is fantastic. Let's compare side by side and you can see how amazing S-Log2 truly is. Look at all that dynamic range, just splendid. Here we go, this is ungraded S-Log2 in the S gamut color space. Just remember to make sure to have LUTs from Sony, which work with the S gamut profile. So here we go, graded, you can see the shift in colors. It's a little bit different from the Cine2 color space, but it's just beautiful in its own way. Different looks, just depending on what you're shooting. So here we go, side by side, you can see the S-Log2 S gamut graded to ungraded, and the green and blue is just popping. It looks gorgeous. Now let's go ahead and compare them side by side, Cine2 versus S gamut. Now S gamut is much harder to work with, but it is a lot more accurate in the greens. They both look great, but S gamut is fantastically perfect. Thanks for watching guys, I'm Corey with Famous Media. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and stay tuned for some more stuff I got coming out. Happy shooting.